Okay, uh, since only one more person is missing, so I guess we can already start. Uh, if you don't have any questions, let's uh, continue with our user mode implementation of a reliable streaming uh, communication protocol. So in the last uh, lecture we implemented the connection establishment, so the three-way handshake. So the next thing to do will be to send some data and um, then start slowly re uh, implementing all the mechanics that, that are necessary to have a reliable communication even in a situation where we can expect some package lost. Mm, so we can quickly test the code from last time again just to see that, no that nothing broke in the meantime. So as you see it uh, successfully establishes a connection between our two uh, locally implemented sockets. Um, and then the next step will be to add some data that we will want to send. So let's see. In the test server here, uh, well I think we set the test client. Um, we already have some code that tries to send something, although it doesn't do anything. So the first thing to implement will be uh, the body of the send function. And for this we will need a couple of things, namely we will uh, most important need a send buffer such that we can um, emulate the behavior of normal TCP sets that we can send, put, well, generally just uh, send an arbitrary amount of data and it will um, be able to cache some of it so that the send function returns immediately and we can, if we want to wait for it to finish sending. Um, so f to do this we will be extending our uh, state structure with a send buffer. At, at this opportunity we can al also add a receive buffer. buffer. Where was it? Uh, defined. I see TCP here we defined it. Um, <laughs> One thing that we will want from our buffer is that we will we want to be able to um, to easily and quickly look up new data and add um, so data. W basically, what we want is a, a sort of um, queue where we can I insert packages just on one end and get them out on uh, the other. <coughs> and uh, there, are, there is a couple ways how this can be implemented. The simplest way would, would of course be using a std uh, dq I think we would need to include that uh, just q and the, the dq is like it's just a double and that is Only a single and that queue, okay. Um, and here we can specify as a uh, block type a, a structure that we want to put in our buffer. But what probably would be more elegant would be a mechanism that would allow us uh, to store just a um, arbitrary binary data and then have arbitrary offsets, so that would be. Uh, one once so basically one strategy option one, one use std to store uh, to store to store packets so that when the data w when we try to send data we'll cut them up into packages directly and then uh, store these packages on the queue and then send the packages one by one um, this is a nice approach. The downside is that we cannot easily later on change the size of the packages that we want to send. The option two would be uh, to use some sort of um, simple array which we can use as a ring buffer and then uh, we could access any offset and send data at any offset in this array. Um, I think for this implementation we probably should go with a 
simpler approach, which is a Q, so the adaption would be um, and to do this we can uh, use um, also either just um, the DQ or what we also could try to do is we could try um, putting the data in a map because um, what we will have um, to deal with is a scenario where we send a couple packages and then we will get um, acknowledgements for the packages back and these acknowledgements may uh, so one one package may, might have not arrived so we have no guarantee that they will arrive in any particular order and we have no guarantee that all of them will arrive so a the use of a ring buffer uh, would in be a more complicated um, mechanism because there we would really need to handle the situation where a part of a buffer somewhere in the middle was already received and the rest was not. With uh, using um, with prepackage prepackaging our data uh, elements and then allows us basically to quickly eliminate individual packages from the from the buffer which already we know have has been received on the other end and then the buffer leaves us only with the packages which um, still need to be processed. Mm. So I think we will go with option 1. Although this is of course not how normal TCP works. So in, in the r uh, classical or standard implementation of t uh, TCP, um, the way they are handling this is that the acknowledgement packages uh, just contain a sequence number um, from the data stream as such. So what you basically do is you only account acknowledgement pa pa so what you can do of course it uh, you could you can improve on it but a simple way would be to just count the packages for which acknowledgement package uh, so only count the offset for which uh, all the required uh, packages um, acknowledgement acknowledgement packages have been uh, uh, received um, or what you also could do is on the receiving side that you only send packages acknowledgement packages out for the part of the data for which you have a full sequence uh, without any gaps. Um, and as um, I guess this is apparent, th this approach becomes complicated very quickly. So we will go with the option one where we prepackage our packages. So for that, we will need to think about a new structure which will contain uh, our package data. And this should um well what will we need? Let's quickly give it a name as uh MTCP block for example. Um it will definitely need to contain uh the data itself. It will need to contain um some sequence number. And uh, that might already be everything that we will need. Um, so let's quickly. We want anything else. What we we might also want to have a counter how often the package has been resent. So, assuming that we lose some data, uh, some packages don't arrive, and we resent them, then it would be good to count it. So, uh, oops, resend count. And what we might also want to know is when the package was sent, so that we can mm, calculate some timeout. So, last sent time would be also good to have. Okay, so let's start implementing that. We will use just a normal buffer, so byte temp buffer for our data. We will use a uin32 for you for our size. So we don't have this, so we define so let's go with you long. It's the same internally. Uh, see for our size, for the sequence number, ah, uh, sorry, size. Separate for the sequence number as well, so let's call that um, an L sequence number size. Whereas 
send count and send time. Send count uh, probably it's it enough to use here some thing smaller. We will not resend packages uh, arbitrary often after a couple resends without success. We will just drop the connection. So we go for a. Is this defined? Yeah, this is defined. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go for U short for this. Um, you send uh, send count and for the send time we'll go again with a long send 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 time um, oops. Uh, so buffer data Okay, here uh, we should have some limit how large the largest um, package of data can be. So let's um, add a comment that it should be let's say equals the maximal segment size that we can oops, send over the network. Uh, sequence number, send count and send time for timeout calculation for connection drop ok this will be everything we need uh, let's add a constructor to it Size is size. Buffer we need to allocate. Oops, and fill in. Buffer, comma data. Comma u size. Ah, uh, sequence number. And the rest starts with zero. Okay, same time equals zero. Check equals zero. Okay, this is everything. Uh, we need a disk tractor, of course, so that, let's add that as well. Delete a uh, much out of formatting we just want this to be one line yeah let's add a space here okay one problem that we will have of course is that um using here a uh sorry here a long for a sequence number means that we can within this implementation only send about four uh, billion packages <laughs> um then once it happens, the number would the numbers would start to repeat, which would not be good. Um, but I think, given that we will uh, target a um, segment size of about, of about one kilobyte, this in practice means that um, we will have like a maximal transfer limit per stream of four terabyte, which is most certainly more than enough. So I don't foresee any reasonable application where one would uh, stream within one connection more than 4 terabyte of data but uh, since we know that this might be an issue at least hypothetically let's add a comment uh, oops, noted sequence number, comma um,
so we have this and then we need to um, as already mentioned add our buffers here for this we can define a type uh, map uh, no, sorry, std map and the thing will have a uh, or long as key and a pointer to our uh, buffer as value. So as I said, um, if we would be using uh, just a queue or a list or something, we would need to uh, go from one end th through the thing and always check um, when when the data can be uh, removed once we receive it, uh, once we uh, receive the acknowledgement for the send uh, using a map. Uh, and the right trick later on will allow us to very efficiently find packages at a given uh, sequence number. So let's stick with that and let's call this um, t trans type transfer both since it, it will be used for sending and for receiving. So it will not be will not have a specialized name uh, yet. Um, and we uh, see both. both. Okay. So next step will be to break uh, up the data that we get into our send function into small uh, into the individual packages that we will be able to handle here. So to do that, we go to our send with it implementation okay um okay uh we should test whether the socket is actually connected so uh, m state if m state is not uh connected then we will just return an error and this one uh, we probably should add uh, some later uh, logic that would um, allow us to retrieve what error actually occurred currently we are just always if something goes wrong returning minus one without specifying what the problem was but that's an improvement for later so now we just focus on the main functionality. Um, then we should um, also... Huh, one thing we will also need is uh, to keep track of how much is in our buf buffer already. So for this we actually should add um, an additional variable that would allow us to do this. Uh, was this uh, here? Um, in this sense uh, we will have um, since we will be able to have more than four ta four gigabyte in the buffer, we will use a uh, oops it's a in sixty four m cent buff size. Mm. No, that's uh, that's not a good idea. We can stick to oolong because at any given time we will not have like the buffer terabytes of of size. We are only storing like. The amount of data which is not yet sent, so we can use actually a long just fine. I yes, said we don't uh, need this prefix. Um, for the receive buffer, the same thing. Uh, maybe we should structure this a bit since we will have different uh, other f fields for the two functionalities for sending and for receiving. Uh, sending. Sending. We also need some uh, general configuration, so we will uh, store um, the max segment size. Oops. Here as a variable, which we actually need to uh, initiate le somewhere quickly. So uh, for now, let's do this here. Ah, uh, no, let's maybe do it actually in the console. Well, the thing doesn't have a console. Uh, 
Um, what would be more elegant? I mean, we'll be always starting off with a default value. Mm. So let's just add a constructor to this for now. Maybe later we'll move it somewhere else, but for now this is fine. Um, do we just go for four kilobyte? Uh, well, we could try uh, the maximal size that it is typically supported over the internet. So let's go with this value, and later we can test um, if we want to set it to something lower. But for for the beginning, I think this is good enough. Um, okay. So we have set this. Now we can go back to our send function. Where is it? Here is it. And we will first of all check um, if we have enough room in the buffer to send anything. So, um, oh, I forgot one more thing. We need to initialize uh, this and this um, with zero. If we don't initialize it, we have a problem. Okay. Um, so already the constructor here is starting to be useful, since it avoids uh, us from having to do the same initialization in each constructor individually of the um, actual socket itself. Uh, send. Send. Okay. So um, if um, send buffer. Plus, um, let's go with uh, buff len. Although we should actually do it differently. Um, std. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll take the mi oops the minimum of buffer length. Or the send buffer max segment size. So what we want. So if this is uh, small enough, we can take it. Or if we have enough room to at least take one segment in the buffer, then uh, we say it's okay. So our idea to checking here is like the normal TCP that uh, we can say okay, we send something successfully, but not as much as we were expected to. So uh, why is it complaining? Um, because it's a different type. Um, okay, we need to check this. Uh, and this needs to be so. Would send buffer. If send buffer plus the block that we would add would bigger than. Uh, we need a limit value somewhere. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, and it should be size. Here we should have another ops. Uh, have a variable max send buffer that we will be able to fill in as a limit. So with TCP uh, you can in fact um, tell Windows how large you want your buffers to be. So with our implementation we want the same thing. But if I said uh, this would be more than our buffer size then we just return again minus one to indicate that something went wrong. Or we return zero then we can at least tel tell apart a actual error from not being able to send something. Let's go with returning zero and kind of saying everything was successful. This is not quite as Windows um, does this, so we might run, if you would use our implementation directly somewhere else, you would run into a problem where uh, if, th if, it's n if it's zero and not an error, then it would think, okay, everything was fine, I would just try to send the next package, and instead of waiting, um, for the data to actually be sent, it would run in an endless loop trying to resend the data. But since uh, we know that, for now we'll just uh, stick with that. And let's now quickly add our uh, max buffer size and here for receiving the same thing. Mm, long uh, max. Okay. And buffer with let's throw max let's throw buffer. Okay, and we need to think about a reasonable size for those. 
Um, <laughs> how much would be good? Um, yeah, a couple kilobytes. I mean, we can of course use this as a measure. So let's go with uh, for the send buffer eight packages, and for the receive buffer to be on the safe side, let's go with sixteen. Let's go with sixteen packages. Um, it doesn't need to be a multiple of uh, the segment size, but it's just a nice uh, shorthand to f to have the right, uh, or to have a reasonable value, because I said that there is no right value. Let's now see why this is still complaining. Uh, M E Wolfland it should not be complaining. Buffer length we have, segment M segment size we have, buffer length in M segment size that is defined, it finds it. Let's try compiling to see if we get a better error message. Um, or if it will be just fine. No, it's not. Um, isn't there an STD mean defined? There should be. Um, or at least it. Ah, that's the problem. The, uh, there is a minimum defined uh, in one of the our windows includes, so let's just go with that one. Okay. Um, so at this point we have checked that the socket is configured, we have checked that um, we have enough room in our buffer. Um, let's go with this and add a to-do. Oops. Uh, Let's add a comment if we can forget it. And now ca we can calculate how much data we actually can send. So long to send. Um, and to send will be again minimum of either how much the um, user wants us to send or uh, was it upload buffer size? No, upload max buffer. Minus buffer size. Okay. So this much we can send. Um, for now, we have not uh, added any synchronization or thread handling. So um, for now, let's uh, leave it as is. But we might later want to improve that um, with adding some multi-thread capabilities. So we we'll need a counter where we count how much we actually send, which starts with zero, and in the end we will return this number. We do not expect any errors to be able to happen now. And while um, to send is larger than send. Good, we will need to do a few more things here uh, later on, but this is for later. So uh, we need to find out the next sequence number to use. Uh, we are missing again something. We will need somewhere um, a last used sequence number in our thing here. So let's go with. Um, Where we have state, uh, um, last set, and we only need this for sending, I think. Now we will need that for receiving as well, probably. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, um, let's, that can stay. Let's add the sequence number here. Last send sequence number. Uh, that will be an oolong as already said. Uh, for the receiving set, we will need the uh, last acknowledged uh, sequence number. Last uh, uh, act. Okay, that sounds that uh, reads nice enough in the shot enough. 
Okay, we will then set both to zero, of course. Um, last act. It's usually good to not use too long uh, variable names uh, because then you can type your code faster. <laughs> um, okay. So we have this. Um, it starts with zero. Um, interesting thing is that normal TCP would uh, start their sequence numbers uh, with a random number, and then they would have this wraparound so that they can. Um, re so they are they are not limited to a actual li uh, limit of um, how many bytes they can send. And then it's also fine to just start with a random number because then you don't lose anything. But since um, we don't. Uh, implement the wraparound mechanism yet. Um, we will just go for uh, always starting with zero. So uh, that is good enough. Okay, we are here. Where were we? Uh, okay, so uh, number uh, for now we just define our variable. We need a uh, what was it S U M T C P block per um, block. Okay, and now we will need to uh, see if there is um, something in our uh, send buffer. Mm because we might want so if the if so what the way we will do it is um we want to be as st streaming like as possible so we do not want the case where we put here for example very short packages on our send buffer and then we will waste a whole uh package in our queue and then based on how we will implement later transfer logic uh waste overhead sending too many headers around so what we will do is we will always check if the last uh block in our uh, send buffer has already been sent and if it has not yet been sent um and it is not full so its size is smaller than the uh, segment size we will uh cram as much of our of the data that we are supposed to send into the last unsent um buffer entry as we can and only then we will continue uh, with creating new um, pack packages in our send buffer. So uh, how do we do that? Um, as I said we will be exploiting the properties of a of the map. Uh, where was it defined? Uh, here. Um, so for this thing, uh, we should create a small test project because it's a quite, quite nice um, property. Although let me think, do we need that? We could do it simpler, I guess. And buffer. Um. Actually, that should be easy enough. We don't need a sample for that. Um, we will just get the last entry from the map. Uh, M send both. Uh, begin. Um, And if E is not um, end, Punkt. so begin is end if there is nothing in in it, and then we have the else case. Um, let's call it. Uh, Send or send. Start with the send buffer empty. Okay, so if we have an uh, uh, entry here, 
then uh, we'll first need to check um, so e second punct uh, size is smaller than uh, segment size. Okay, so if it is smaller and if the send count is zero, oops, send it. Okay, so if this is the case, then we can uh, reuse it. So we said. Um right, so size is smaller, that is fine. And it wasn't sent. Yes, so in this case we don't need to do anything to the sequence number, we will just uh Mm, yeah, so we give this case empty. The RS case. So um, we need to create a new segment. A uh, block. We need to create a new block. So uh, our sequence number. Sequence number is equals the max value of the buffer entry. Second, or the last sent sequence number that we had. So we want here to have the right number. Um, so M. That needs to be incremented by one. Um, that should be fine. Okay, yeah. Um, the buffer entry here. Um, no, we forgot one thing. Um, We should set this to our buffer entry. And in the else case, okay, we can theoretically set this to zero to dot of undefined variables, but we should not use it later anyways. And here we will um, set to null. Okay, and in this case where we don't have yet anything sent, we also send, of course, the block to null and we set our sequence number just directly to be the last sequence number plus one. Okay. Um that should be good enough. Um okay. So now we will be be splitting the data so create mm, calculating a size of how much data we want to send uh, in one block. So you log again size. I don't use size yet. This is the minimum of. Um, no, we don't need extra brackets to send and minus send uh, or. Max segment size again. Suck. Okay, so this is how much we would want to send in one go. Let's quickly check. Does this have a? Yeah, it has brackets everywhere. Um, so now the we can check the first case if um, we haven't found a block which we want to add to. So this is null. And then we have the else case where 
which will be more complicated. So in this case, we just uh, create a new block. So the block is equals new uh, s block, and this and now we will uh, be doing some trickery, which will be apparent later while we do it. So we will select here. Um, uh, so it will be in the second line. For now, we just first have to in initialize it. So size, then data mm, is our. What was it? Uh, this thingy. But we first need to cast this to char. Oops. Char asterisk buffer plus uh, what already has been sent, so that we always get the offset of the newest data. Uh, then we need a sequence number which we've already computed here and now uh, to the trickery so m send buffer Oops. Um, insert um, let's quickly check what we what arguments we have the normal insert function uh, takes this strange uh, pair thingy. It's not like in Qt where you can uh, just use the key and value, but since we have a new uh, um, compiler, a newer C version than the super old one, let's quickly check if they have maybe added a convenience function, but it does not seem like they have done it, so we need to go with std uh, make pair um, first is the key, so uh, int, not long. Then there is the value type. Now we can add the values which we want to insert. So we go. Uh, we will be using uh, in this map a trick. So we'll, uh, for the receive map, we will use the or the ori original sequence of um, the original sequence number. While for for the send uh, buffer, we will be using um, kind of uh, the opposite will be counting from the top, so uh, int max minus sequence number and then our new buffer entry. Okay, nice. Uh, why is that complaining? With a few couple thingies. Um, size. Um, char. Okay, this is not char. So let's uh say. Well, okay, let's just cast. We could also go with byte. Then it should not complain. And what is it complaining about here? Um, choo choo choo. Oolong, but this is Oolong. I shouldn't be complaining about simple casts and block is of the right type um team team s u m block yep Should be fine um i mean in principle this it should not require the arguments Okay, that's also fine. If it if it's fine without telling it what types to expect. Or was it the other order? No, type one, type two, type one, type two. Uh perhaps we should have made one of them a reference, doesn't matter. Um that is now in the map. Um and now we will need to um up handle the second case, so uh to save and Oops. okay so we'll need to calculate a new size so size will be now uh, the minimum of size and of uh, whatever room is left in the block so this minus block uh, Block size, okay. Two point. Um, 
Um, okay, so we have this, we have this. Um, chim, chim, chim. Okay, so um, uh, let's quickly cache the size of what we had before in our block. Size and we will need a buffer, so let's buffer. Okay, now we will um, create a new buffer with um, of the size. Uh, how do one more thing? We will need to copy the size, so size. Is now plus equals size, so we add the data to our buffer. Sack. Okay, now we need. Oh. We could have we could improve on that. We we don't need to use new and um, always uh, reallocate memory. We could use malloc and free and it offers us the realloc function so let's go with that um oops uh malloc size here we have then three that is an improvement here so we can use um we unlock the old block the new block and the new size okay so doing it this so then we will not need this the old size we will still need we need to cast this to by the asterisk of course Yep, that is a nice improvement. Um, okay, and we of course need to copy the new part of the data. So uh, buffer plus wherever we already were to set we use uh, our thingy, and then the size to copy is our set a new size here. And that's it. Okay. And if we're done with this, we can add to send our size, and we will need, of course, to increase our send buffer. M send buffer size is also is also increased by size. Okay. Um, this we will need. Um, to do next. Um, so we need a function which will try to send some data from the send buffer and we will trigger it each time uh, we either receive an acknowledgement, we have a timeout event or uh, each time we send we add something new to the buffer. So mm, here right. let's call it try to send Zack. And we will trigger it from here or so at here to uh, this is that's a reminder for later so that I don't forget to do that. Okay, we don't lock or unlock anything yet since we have everything running in uh, one thread. Um Though that might not be the best idea, really. I mean, we already here are um, some are using one th one helper thread. Um, so yeah, we should probably already now start thinking about locking things. Uh, but maybe maybe later. Mm. Let's first take a look in our to our try send function <laughs> Tr 
try send, try to send. So in the function, um, we will again need some uh, s with s. Um, try to send as much as we can so here we will uh, we will need another helper variable we will need a few things uh, <laughs> um, that gets complicated rather quickly um, but one thing we definitely need is a wrong um, pending window size. This var variable will contain the count of packages which have been sent on their way um, and we'll also need uh, a variable where we store uh, how much we want to have on their way. So let's call this window size um and for the window size we should um start with some reasonable package count um what would be reasonable i mean we could start with one Respectively, uh, one more thing to think about. Do we want to count by packages or count by buffer size? Um, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we'll go with counting packages, that should be fine. So here, M. Window if so if window size is greater than m uh, pending window size, then it means we can send at least one package. So m upload uh, so we send buffer um, find ah not find. Uh, lower bound that, that we need to check so there are two functions defined on map lower bound and uh, upper bound um, I always forget that what which one does what which so the difference is that one of those gives us the um, value closest to uh, what we request and the other one gives us the value closest or the requested value I uh, quickly need to check that um, Which one does which? Uh, <laughs> so okay, so upper bound is this. And lower bound will be the one that returns um, um, then the the next one or the right one. Okay, that are the two definitions of the two functions. And the nice thing about the map is that they can do this very efficiently, so it does not uh, require uh, to go through all the elements. It just uh, with um, 
the complexity of um, log so the complexity to look up something in the map is not uh, the amount. So it doesn't need the amount of operations on average. Um, how say it? The amount of uh, lookup operation. The amount of comparison operations within the map. So is not. So if let's say if you have a hundred elements in the map, so if it would not be a map but a list, if you would want to find one particular one in this list, then on average you would need to. Just comp may compare every entry, and on average, after half of the comparisons, you would find what you are looking for. So, of course, when your list grows very long, finding elements in this list uh, becomes very inefficient. A map u uses internally a binary tree, which allows you to retrieve elements from the map, where the amount of this uh, comparison operations to find the element is about the logarithm of the amount of elements in the map. So, if you double the size of your map, then you on average n only need one more lookup to find what you were were looking for so uh it's a very um efficient way to store and retrieve uh data so here um let me think which one we would want um um <laughs> We'll also need another helper variable. Oh, sorry, we already have it. But it's last send sequence number. Then we don't need any helper variables. Um, we will just try one of them and then well, let's think. We will just go with um, the last send sequence number plus one. Um. <laughs> Could we actually do it without this? Uh, maybe. Actually, we we could for now at least even don't use those functions. That should be an easy enough trick. So we just go with find for now, and that should work. Um, and max. Oops, it's not typing. So find oops, uh, find is also of course uh, just as efficient as upper bound and lower bound. Int, int max uh, minus m. Oops, uh, that's not our nomenclature for this. So this minus m uh, last send sequence number plus one. I think this will also work. We will later check whether it works, and if it does not, then we will need to to fix it. But uh, I think that should work like this as well. Okay, and this gives us a uh, iterator, which can either be null if nothing is found or something. So, if this is equals m send buffer end. Then uh, break because there is nothing more to send, or else we just continue sending things. So we can increment this by one. We can increase our pending window size by one as well. Um, and then we will try to send a segment. So we need another helper function. Send send block stroked uh, Correct. Um, no, I think it's not. Well, let's just try it out. <laughs> so we insert things to our buffer. Then we want to find 
Now let's just see if we find the block. <laughs> if we find it, then everything worked out fine. If we don't find it, then we have a bug, uh, and we will need to use the other functions. I think here it should be easy. Uh, okay, we have an error somewhere. Yep. Damn it. Um. Ah. Yes. Block is equals e. Second. Well, actually, we. If we can also just go and do it like this without. Yeah. Okay, let's run. Forgot the uh, class name. Okay, that something's not working at all. Did not even try sending anything, so let's put a breakpoint here and see what's not working. Ah, we are not yet connected. Ah, uh, that is not good. So, client. Um <laughs> uh, connect is not blocking, that's the problem. Um it complicates things. Uh that complicates things a bit, or maybe even a lot. Um <laughs> Yeah, we will need to uh, to make here to make this uh, blocking first. So uh, let's go with one of our earlier samples. Where did we have it? Sideways. No, I don't think this was the right one. Um, <laughs> my friend. Okay, here were here we used QT stuff. Um, uh, test empty. That's the right one. Okay. Uh, Mutex is good, critical section is better, but we need events. Uh, didn't we use events? Oh yes, we used. No, wait, we did not, only Mutex. Um, then when did we do that? Um, do, do, do. Then maybe it was in test wait. Perhaps it wasn't test weight. Yes, here we have um and is there a easier way? No, it's there is right, we could um yes we could so we uh, ideally we probably should uh, try to and not use any Windows specific uh, functionality, but try to implement this using STL things only. Condition variable that was like a waiter. So, was about TCP. Um, <laughs> How do we do that the most elegant way? Um, <laughs> first of all, we add the includes here. Oops. Ah, sorry, uh, we the includes first. Um, text and wait condition. Actually, by this logic, we should also go with uh, using this uh, thread thingy 
instead of creating an own thread, but we can change that. Uh, we can change that later on. Okay, let's go to our function to our structure here. Okay. Mm ah, uh, well, we need a mutex for that, and we need the weight condition. So, um. Let's call this a uh, wait connect. Uh, connect. Wait, do we need the mutex uh, here? Um, let's quickly. Mm, Lock mutex, mutex. I don't think that needs to be globally defined. Uh, so here we only add the wait condition. Wait connect. Okay. Uh, put our connect function here. Uh, haha, let's. We will need a mutex, but we will need a couple mutexes actually. So we need one mutex here, then we will need our wait condition um, there. And I said we could go with um, std thread. This is the only thread we create here. Now we create two threads. But now for for now we change this. So we go with std uh, thread. Let's quickly see. Okay, yeah. mm. Um now we need our function, so it was this one. Um, and we can give it an argument. Okay. And we need, I think, to start it. It does not auto start. Uh, or does it? Um, okay, it automatically starts it, so this is fine. Don't need this. Uh, we could actually change this definition to uh, take this thing here directly as argument that we make and we just make for uh for it since we don't care for a return parameter. Um okay that that would need us to change also here the friend uh, what was it? Yeah. This thing here. So for now let's just leave it as it was, we can improve it later on. The mutex is not here. Um, I stand there. Mutex. Hmm. Okay, uh, that is not a parameter. Um, but we don't have any other includes. Does mutex wait variable be included that somewhere else? 
And that's already defining mutex. Um, ha. Uh, we are using C version. Oh, is it general? Hmm. Uh, uh, There's different options. Okay, so let's go with uh, debugger. Yeah, but okay, this here we had the, we used the QD, so it will probably use the C17. Let's quickly check since which version of um, C++ we can use this unique lock function. Um, C11, and which one we are using here? Uh, let's also see what. Ah, sorry, test. Um, here we want to show it. Properties. Um, general. Okay, this is newer. That should be fine. Um. Why is that complaining? Um, the other thing is sure why because M um, and we wanted this without M's in the name. Uh, so this is one thing, but this yeah, it's the unique lock. It's the unique lock, and this thing takes a mutex. And that should be fine. Why isn't it? Um, argument list. This is defined here just fine. Um, <laughs> want build errors only. Um, <laughs> and you can just try setting it to the newer version of the C compiler. Yeah, but now it's fine, it's not complaining. So it probably, um, they changed something between C14 and C17 that made it not yet work as it should. Although, according to the documentation, this um, class should be available already since uh, since the older version. Uh, I mean, we can try if we can get it to work with the with the f one we have here, uh, but normally that should okay. This way it works as well. But normally it should be smart enough to find out the type um, just based on the argument we are passing to it. Because or does it have more than one constructor? It that might be the problem. It has too many constructors and doesn't know what to do. Okay, but anyhow, this is now working. Okay, so we have our wait condition. Um, then we had when we again try this, um, notify one we can use perfect. Um, okay, and uh, we have also in introduced a mutex on our M, which we need to, uh, <laughs> Thing because what we want to avoid is of course that this thing says that the condition is already set, but does this notify one? What will this thing do if we say notify one and it already is um, notified? Okay, um, for now 
let's just try it if this will be working the way we expect it to work and then we uh, and then we test if the other things work as they should so um we are here in this thing and somewhere we will be setting it to connect it um set sync arc uh let's start with network state um state sequels uh connecting connected okay then notify one okay let's try if this works as expected um, I think there might be a few more things we will need to improve, but one problem after the other. Okay, so now we go into send and state is 4, that looks good. Okay, so let's continue, now we go here, size is 1, pending window size is also true, so then here we try to get the... Nope, that didn't work. Ah, okay, so uh, let's see. We have here uh, in our send buffer one entry at FFFE, and this one gives us This thing is zero. Yes, this is f max. So this should be just f max plus one. Should wrap around. Uh, it wraps around, but it gives us zero. If it plus two. Huh? Um. Mm -hmm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need this scraper and let's run it again. Okay, something didn't work out again. Why that? Yeah, pro probably because this doesn't work. So I, I think the problem r which we're having right now is that this thing can trigger um, the notify before we actually start waiting. So this is not not good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's quickly check the um, documentation of this um, wait condition. Um, my <coughs> so single log conditional variable. Um, okay, uh, okay, so let's uh, use the mutex structure which we have. Uh, Created on M, and apparently this should automatically unlock this mutex. So now, if if we go here to our send process, um, before accessing anything, we can we'll need to uh, acquire the mutex again. Alright, uh, so send process here. Let's see, receive from socket. Mm -hmm. So here we go in process package. This is an internal function. Send reset. Everything looks pretty much like internal functions, so let's just lock f everything for the duration of this loop um, and see if there ever then everything works out as it should okay connections are being established but are we still uh, trapped in our 
wait, or do we actually manage to get out of this? Nope. Um, <laughs> but this is happening. So the mutex is properly unlocked by the wait condition. And if we go in here. Oh, we don't get this package, that's not good. Oh yes, we, we trigger it, but it stays locked. Team, team, team. Mm, that is not useful. Um. Let's go with, with just using an event for that. Uh, I will look l later into whether we can use this uh, STL function to achieve what we want. Um, so uh, we just create a uh, critical section, and uh, that's another example. Um, Lock and a under ha um connect event Um yeah so uh connect event we initialize to null yeah um we do the grid the section we will uh want to use for other things as well so we use the initialization so we'll just initialize it um always to that we will need um, did we have a free for that? I think we need also a free. This is the utility in critical section. So we also need to have a destructor. Um, if this is set, then. Um, Close handle event. Okay. And we, well, it doesn't matter. Let's just go with the one line co code. Um, okay, okay. So, uh, and I think we created our own, didn't we? This is the section guard helper class that we can use now. Um <laughs> let's add a new um, header for that. Header um helpers. And it should be fine. Yep. Um. Um. M. Lock. Yeah, we lock here everything. Um. Here we are inside, so here we will need to notify. So M connect event. So if there is a connect event, the set event. Okay. okay let's maybe go with. It looks better. Okay, set event. And now we just need to create it first. So M. 
uh, connect event is equals um, create event uh, null menu reset um, false or should go with true? let's go with true initial state false not set name no name ok we set with menu reset which is fine ok so connect event we have then we just uh, wait for single object and we wait forever we will need to add a timeout later so such that even if we kind of here wait forever this connect event will be triggered just that um, then the connection will have failed so here we, as we expect that this must be equals um, connected um, to do add uh, connection timeout Okie dokie, so this is fine, this should now be working as it should. Um, yep, so now we have our connection. Uh, so this goes, this works. Um, did we find something? Yes. Okay, so now let's without any break any breakpoint check if we arrive at send block we did very good um so uh this is working um <laughs> the whole thing is kind of getting more and more complicated so um Let's see where, what, where, uh, at which <laughs> of the many, um, how to say it, Baustellen construction sites we would want to continue. But since today we started with send block, then we should continue with send block. And during the next part, we will look into making the other things uh, properly uh, blocking and also checking uh, if we can use. Um, somehow the STL functionality uh, since it would be nice if uh, once we are done our example would be platform independent so we should not use any Windows specific stuff so um, what do we do here in our twice and um, we could check whether it's still connected but this check we, sh we could do later on so that should be fine we assume that connected so let's just start. Where were we here? We will outsource this check to somewhere else. Okay, um, and then now we will just try to send a buffer entry. Um there might be a use case where we won't want to send an empty package. Um so we will add here a if this is not empty as uh, if it is empty, although in principle I guess we could uh to to send an empty package use a ah it's fine let's go with this um yeah so now we will need to construct a, a data package we already did some of those let's do here um a package that is fine here we need a data of code um right yo and since this is one large block of data this will need to be done differently um p package is equals uh 
size of this plus block uh, size one two okay oops um Let's quickly check. So we have here, dish, dish, and then we have payload. Um, um, two, two, two. We w we need to add a few more. Uh, do we? Well, we need uh, definitely the sequence number. Um, we need to add at least a sequence number to the thing. So. We either just put everything into payload or we put it here into the header. Um, let's go with that uh, union. Uh, uh, so we'll change our concept here slightly. Um, Struct. Um, type. This will be of the type data mm, long sequence number, and we don't call it payload but the data. Um, yeah, and we'll have different types. So we have sync, data, fin, and sync and fin don't contain anything except the opcode and the um protocol ID so they don't need an entry here. Uh that helps. Okay, so um this always allocates the largest amount of memory plus size, okay. Here we need to go with the pointer. This of course will be oops uh, once we're done. And mm, we should then, of course, save the size somewhere. Um, okay. Uh, wait, why is it complaining? No. Yeah, because I changed the name. Um, so here we can just cast this on character. We don't need a reference, and we already have size. Um, t t t m m with address um I think this needs a pointer. This one's a point, okay. Nice, okay, so we have this, we have this. Um, write your so package. If we have one, then data punct sequence number is equals per block sequence number and per data, per data, per data, that is maybe not the nicest. Uh, uh, mem copy two per data from our block uh, size uh, comma mm, block wait sorry not from block size uh, buffer and now block size okay so the this is in we have everything uh, we need. And the other use case is just we will send an empty sequence number. Just try to check if this is consistent. So here, yeah. So our first send sequence number will be one. So there is no valid uh, package with one uh, with one a sequence number. And the idea is here that we can use a kind of empty dummy package um, if we want to think the connection to, to have, for example, some sort of keep alive functionality. Um, although we are not using it now, it's good to have. Okay, so this is here, and then we send it. Yep, that should work. So now we can go uh, to the c code which handles 
this, okay, this break case here, and we should end up in it, unless of course the compiler optimizes our breakpoints away, which I don't think, since it's a debug build. Or maybe it did. Um, yeah, why? Yeah, I just optimize them away because we don't have don't do anything um here. Uh tch tch tch. I know. Yeah, this one this it will not optimize away. Um Here again, something didn't work out. Um, <laughs> why? We create the event first, so we definitely have a event before it tries this, and then internally it must do the set event. Um, we also have here our log function, so this should be... I mean, since we are not using it, I can comment this out for now, but we will need this later. Anyways... Okay, now it works. Okay, we have the send, and then we arrive here. And if we look in our package, data sequence number one, and we have our hello world. So the sending already was uh, al already worked works uh, nice. Uh, at least uh <laughs> the simplest case where we don't have any retransmissions or package packet lost. Um, any functions until uh, sorry any functions any questions until then until now. No questions. Okay. Since last time we were a bit over time, so I, so I will try to um, finish today maybe 15 minutes shorter, so we will not do any breaks now. We'll just now continue with our implementation uh, to the next um, part. So here. Uh, do we need any checks? Let's see. Um, <laughs> we've already checked that the package size is at least as large as the header. Um, okay, that also might need improvement later. But this is fine. So we know that we have the whole thing. So we can uh, directly here start with doing something with our with the data we have received, so we can add a fun a new function mm, process uh, process um, process data, which will get the oops, data sequence number. It will get the data where data as such and we need the, the data size. Uh which we have not oh we have we have for okay we, we that will need improving so we need to change our function our process package function to include um to include the size. Um of the whole thing. Um, okay, so we have here, comma, uh, size, 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 that's foul level. What are we doing using it as here as well? Okay, and here we can now go with size minus size of header. 
it will need to add a process data function as well. Um, do we want this to be void? Um, yeah, I don't think we expect any errors here, so it will be a void function. It will not um, return uh, any. So it it will always exceed um sequence number. Uh, const return per data and size the on size okay um instead of a different type that's of type char uh let's go with byte then it will not complain um okay process data uh, so send connect. You have sent block. Actually, it should be called process block. That sounds uh, better. To be uh, and also, it's consistent with the naming scheme we used before. Process block. Good. So the sequence number we already have. Uh, oh, right. Yo, we should uh, check before we do that here that we are in connected state. Um, if state connected, then let's do this. Um, I think we had if we return first, then it means reset, right? What's this block? Now this only makes break. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and break make uh, issue send reset. Break. Yeah, if we don't break, then it will reset the connection. So here uh, we can check. So if it's not in this state, then return false. Because we need to be connected in order to be able to process data. And if it's not connected, then we will uh, to do. Uh, yeah, we should also on do something on unknown packages. But for now, it's fine. Process block. Okay, we have our uh, sequence number. So, ah yes, it might be null since we had this case um, here. So if this is null, um, for now we will not do anything. Um, and return that something for later. Um, for now, we are starting with the very basics of the communication. So we have our number. We will later need to lock. Um, now we will need to check whether the sequence number is valid. So um, and we need. Uh, did we already s saved this? Uh, what was it? Um, last acknowledged number. Okay, we have this already. So if um, mm -hmm, sequence number is equal oops, lower or equals um, m the last acknowledged sequence number or um, it's already in the download buffer, so auto e is gleich m receive buffer find a sequence number. So if this is not null, if this is gleich, uh, sorry, if this is not um, end, yeah, end. 
button. So if it's already acknowledged or it's in the receiving buffer, then uh, we just resend an acknowledgement package because what we assume happened is that um, we sent an acknowledgement package already, but it was dropped and the other side didn't get it. So they s for hmm the package didn't arrive. So let's resend the block. And we don't need the block since we already have it, and then we will return. Uh, we will need then send um, send egg package for this sequence number. So this will be again a function we need to add. Um, yeah, let's do that right now. <sighs> so this is. Um try to send send okay that's the wrong sequence. This should be here. Void um send sequence send egg package. This is uh simple enough. It's like um <laughs> it's pretty much just like this, just without the size the custom size. So in our header we already have enough room for the acknowledgement thingy. So in this case we can go back to use uh, to using just a package um, defined like this. Reference package size of header and um, package punct data sequence number is equal sequence number. Oops. And here we need to change the opcode to the data acknowledgement opcode. Yes. Okay. So the this part is done. So now what we need to do is um to get the data and put them into our buffer. Uh, uh, but we will need to first do a check. So if m, uh, it's a typing, uh, so, uh, so uh, since um, we can more or less receive any sequ any package, um, and also it might be one that is uh, for a block which is which would be later in the buffer than what we have defined our maximal buffer size, so we will need to add here a check where we test um, that uh, if we add this block to our receive buffer, that it will in fact uh, fit. So uh, if it if it won't fit, then what we will do is we will just drop the packet, so we will not add it to our buffer, we will not send an egg, we will just do as if we have never received it. So if um, m that's our buffer size um is buffer size is greater than um m max let's buffer size uh plus wait um Buffer size, so if that buffer size is greater um, then yeah, if it's already larger than the max buffer, so if buffer size plus um, our data size, yeah, so if our what we have in the buffer plus what um we now receive is would make the buffer into uh, would would make the buffer size bigger then we will we will want here to return and not uh do anything do we have any other scenarios uh 
Um, nope. That's as easy as that. And now we can add it to our buffer. So, uh, buffer insert um, um, but this time we will do it in the right order so we go with the sequence number uh, for the insert and uh, now we need to create a new block so it, uh, that's fine new s um, o m uh, block okay and this thing uh, what does it get it gets size it size we have here it gets data and it gets the sequence number um uh, it was your size okay um what's the problem here Ah, uh, it's just sequence number, not your sequence number. Okay, um, that's it. It is in our buffer. And we can send an acknowledgement package. Since, uh, what can we? Um, yeah. It's in the buffer, it is fine. Okay, so this is uh, working. Um, what do we need next? We have this, we have that. Okay, here we are probably missing one more closing bracket. And, um, we will need another event since our test client and us server, uh, what was it, test client, is supposed to uh, then try to receive something. So now, of course, it would run and waste a lot of CPU cycles because it would just check. Um, well, actually, not. We already have a sleep, so that would be fine. Actually, so we could actually already implement our receive function. Oh uh, yeah, that uh, seems we could. Uh, so let's do that. Later we should improve this, it's such that we can also make it blocking, but uh, for now, for now that should be fine, if it's uh, just uh, checking all the time whether there are some data. Um, but there is of course one more problem, we d have not added any synchronization anywhere, even anywhere, and that will uh, be a problem at some point since uh, the receiving of the packages we are doing here in uh, where is the function here in our socket prods which is a known thread while here we will be accessing in the receive function also things from another thread so we at this point really need to look into adding all the missing uh, synchronization code so we already uh, created our log uh, so we have one here. Mm. Connect. Um, technically does not need any log code since it's what it starts the uh, thread. So this plus it's waiting so we would need to unlock it here anyway so this is fine. Uh, send definitely needs a log so here so add a log here because we might try uh, calling send from another thread try send we only call once we have the log so let's add a node um, send block same thing it needs to be logged process block uh, is already locked since we come from here and this comes from there which uh, ah, ha, 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 that is also a problem 
uh, we might have different um, mm -hmm. it's a different M so let's add the lock into here okay so we have a lock here this will do it's an event that is non blocking then we add come here and we know it's locked um, that is for later this is for now okay send package egg package okay so this is also called only from when we have a lock so let's see to our receive function uh, doo -doo -doo. We will need, uh, that will need a lock to be on the safe side then um, we require it. We can copy those two. Um, and we return success. Yeah, we can copy those two. Okay, so it, if it's not connected, then return error. Um, we might, we might not want that. Um, because there might be something in the buffer. So there is a scenario where. One side, one side sends data, then it closes the socket, and then we still have data in the buffer. So we will um, check if uh, this is null end m receive buffer size. This is red buffer size is equals null. Okay, and the next thing we are testing here is if receive buffer is greater null so and uh, okay set error as well okay and then here we will complete so um yeah if the buffer is zero then we return an error because um whether well return zero we will later try to return an error because we don't have anything to return and now we tr will try to receive data from the buffer so um which type would we use here? Oolong. The same type. Uh, to, to receive is again a minimum of uh, what we can fit into the buffer uh, and what we have in our receive buffer size. Okay. Um, yes. So now um, for auto e is equals m receive buffer begin comma um yeah, so this is not null uh, sorry not end No, this is not end. End to to receive is still more than received. We need this as a variable. And this later on we'll just return as our return value. Okay, receive received, and uh, we will want to get the next um, entry in our buffer. Um, okay. So first thing to check is if we have everything. So this is second uh, sequence number. So if the sequence number of the block in our uh, buffer is not the M uh, last act number plus one. So if we will only acknowledge um they will not it already that might be a bug. Uh, send this 
an egg package. Um, that I will need to check. That might be a bug. So the idea is that we only acknowledge the data that we actually have gave given to the user. This way, if you limit uh, the the data rate with which we are re um, pulling data from uh, r the receive function, then you can in fact uh, limit the um, the data rate with which data are sent to you from the other side. Um, but I think that should be fine. We are not using this last acknowledged sequence number anyway. Anyway, so I think this is fine. I don't think we have a bug, but maybe I should change maybe the name of this function to. Um, <laughs> last uh, received sequence number, last process sequence number. <laughs> uh, last processed. Last processed. Last processed sequence number. That is, that will avoid confusion. Right, yo. So if it's not the next we want, we just break because we cannot receive more data since uh, we are. So we have s stuff in the buffer, but the stuff that we have in the buffer is not the next package that we can give the user in order to maintain the uh, right order of the data stream. Um, the name is a bit long. I don't like it. Maybe I should call it last processed. Uh, sorry, last received. Uh, let's go with that last. Last received. That is less typing. Okay. Okay. So we have checked this case. Uh, and then we also will have a problem if well, we may run into a scenario where we only want to. Receive uh, like where when we when this when here we don't have enough room in the buffer for an entire package, so there we could uh, have two ways of handling this situation. One would be that we just say um well uh, error or say that uh, error buffer to small something like that, and then expect uh, that we will be called again with, with a larger buffer. Or the other thing uh, which we could do is that we um just copy whatever data we can and then next time we'll process the same uh, package again and I think this is more reasonable um, yeah <laughs> let's go with that so what we will need to do is we need to add another temporary variable uh, last transfer position, or the last partial transfer position. Um, we can initialize this to zero. Okay, so. Uh, Let me think. Okay, so um, let's read as much as we can. So, um, wrong. Uh, so it's, it's minimum of two to receive minus received uh, or um, yeah. So buffer. Um, size minus our last received position. Uh, this is from M. Okay, so this is the amount of data that we can read, either based on the limitation given by the calling function, or based on whatever is still left in the ba in the package. So. Now we can mem copy to our received buffer. 
data from second per buffer plus a uh, position. If the position is null, of course, then it won't change anything, and we go with uh, size. Then we can add size to whatever we have received. Um, okay, we can do the same for position. And then we check if we have received the entire block already, or rather process. So if this is equals uh, this, then it means we have received the whole thing. So we can increment the counter here, because we have received that. We have to reset this to zero, of course, for the next package. And what we can do is we can remove. Um, okay, this will be a problem. Uh huh. We have to remove that. So um, uh, e is equals erase at e. And then we will not be able to do this plus plus here. So the thing is, if we would erase um, an iterator, then the plus plus operation on this iterator would already fail. So we have to increment it like this. Um, and so in the else case, we will have our plus plus i. Um, if I would we leave it, actually we don't have a reason to leave it in there. I don't think we will ever reach the plus plus case. Um, because what will happen is that this thing will abort. I I will put a breakpoint here. Uh, that would a comment. We we'll we can later play ra play around with it and see if it will um, behave this way. But as said, um, either we receive the whole thing, then we remove it and w receive the next one or we only receive it partially, in which case this condition is already no longer satisfied and we just uh, exit the loop. Um, I mean, I could also add some sort of error here or break. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can add a break here as well. That um, Yeah. Um, this way we uh, we save on at least some comparisons here because we know that this is w this will not continue uh, from there. Okay. Um. Yep. Good. Um. Let's try it out. So uh, let's go to the server side here. Sockets, socket pods. Okay, so at some point we should end up here and have in our receive buffer what we wanted to have. Okay, we have somewhere a bug. Alright, yeah, we rename that to something else. Um, we rename that to this. Okay. Damn it. Um, yeah, we of course need to initialize it with zero. Well, it connected, but it did not receive data. That is not good. So let's see what's happening here. Um, well let's put a breakpoint, maybe even at the. Okay, so we end up here. Buffer is still null. We return null. Oh wait, that that's not right. If buffer is null, then return zero. That 
that was a stupid mistake well, apparently we have some synchronization problems since, since sometimes it does not connect um, that will be fun to debug uh, <laughs> um, Now it connected, but it still did not uh, work as it should. So let's put a breakpoint again at the top. Um, okay, so this. Okay, we don't have anything in the buffer, so we will re repeat this until we have something in the buffer. But apparently, we will never have something in the buffer. I forgot to increment buffer size. Um, buffer size looks like it. Uh, that's of course one way to m to make it not work. Um, was process block. Um, m. Let's find buffer size. Plus equals size. Um, yep. Well, that should be working. <laughs> Remove the breakpoint by any chance? Nope, not really. Okay, so we never ra never end up in the processing here, so let Let's put a breakpoint there. Okay, but we get process block, sequence number one. So what's wrong here? Zack, zack, zack. Okay, that looks correct. Um, buffer size. Um, <laughs> But it's not. This one is still zero. Um, server. <laughs> Client receive. Yeah, that should be right. M lock is the current one. Um, of course, we could have the problem with the process block. Mm, process package. Uh, that should be this one where we enter, where we. So it should be this one where we enter. So, first of all, connect, we will have this, and then we should. Um, There is some bug. Um, yeah, we are calling the wrong process package. Let me just think where we screwed that up. So, if it's a sync package, then we want to create um, a new socket for that sync package and acknowledgement the sync. And then, when we are when we ourselves are listening, okay, that's correct. We find the socket, and if it is okay, that should be right. Strange. Um so let's put the breakpoint here again on op data and see in op data yeah where we came from but that should come from here. Okay, this is fine. Um <laughs> So this is this, and if we go to our server uh, here, ah, interesting. We are not uh, actually reaching that now. So where are we? 
blocking <laughs> okay so this thing works okay um so we have here the create thread for the new and here we have the accept connection let's see if this works correctly well first it's null then we steepen it some point it should not be null but it's always null okay this is not good <coughs> there's the bar oh yeah <laughs> we have not implemented accept that's of course um a problem um that will take slightly longer maybe not um we add we have here somewhere a queue for new uh okay so we add that we have a socket map but we don't have a queue for new for new incoming sockets so uh let's do that quickly um queue I need to include Q. Um, I'm afraid we might not be done in time today either, so it might need a um, um, sockets, okay, and um, what was it? Map.insa uh, here we add it so m new socket pushback or just push oops uh, push socket and since these are different threads we will need to lock this as well so uh, just say we lock here as close to it as we can we go to accept and we lock m um, again and then we uh, check so if m um, uh, new sockets is empty then return null else return pop Okay, now uh, we fix this, so now it should be working, unless we forgot another bug, <laughs> or introduced another bug, um, MTCP asterisk, which type does this, should be fine. Um, ah, damn it. Pop just removes one. Um, punkt, uh, push pop. Um, is that the right one? Um, so the normally the front and back of uh, functions r give you one end of the queue um, pass. just not sure whether I took the right one because no, in the old uh, con um, versions of STL it always said like push front or pop front push back or pop back it was not uh, non-descriptive like this uh, so let's quickly check that STL pop uh, but usually I would assume that it should be the pop back which we want yeah no sorry front this fine front and then we 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 pop because it will always push elements to the back of the queue yeah that makes sense uh let's run uh with uh star okay so except worked 
yeah. with Qt uh, you have functions to uh, pop something from a queue and take it out in one go so you don't need this temporary variable this is quite nice so receive length a buffer size yep this works so server received hello perfect um well it's at least somewhat perfect it's not fully perfect because I think we should here send it and then the client should uh, on its own receive it but this this didn't seem to work yet but uh, since we are almost out of time for today that will be it uh, we will during the next lecture try to finish uh, find the bug why the receiver uh, why the, the client is not receiving the sent back package and we will try to um, find out why sometimes the connection is hanging so uh, we have some synchronization issue somewhere in the code. Uh, are there any questions at this point? I will also try to comment the um, project mo more in more detail um, because for now we only have the code and, and what I said but no comments so uh, I will try when I will be uploading the build for from today um, to add all the comments so it, m it might be that I will upload it only tomorrow or something like that. Uh, but I think the uh, detailed commentary for the um, quite convoluted code is will really be very helpful. Um, yeah, any questions? If there are no questions then we can finish for today. Yes, yes, I will upload them uh, after the lecture. Okay, anything else? Okay, if there is nothing more, then see you next time. Bye-bye.